Hey y'all, let's take a look at solving equations today. Here it comes. So we've been doing all this practice and drill stuff to get to the point where we can solve equations. And one thing to remember, equations, I mean, this is an equation, blah, 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 equals blah, 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 and so on, okay? So equations stay the same if you do the same thing to both sides. When, when you see that equal sign, that means all this jazz is the same as all that. So if you do something over here, you go, oh, two plus this, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to go all this plus two over here. And if you do times three to this whole thing, you're going to go times three to that. Okay, we'll eventually get to harder things. But right now, let's just focus on keeping stuff equal by doing the same thing to both sides. All right, we've done order of operations too so far, right? Remember those parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract? Okay, so to solve equations, you're going to undo PEMDAS, which means you're going to solve an equation by adding and subtracting first before you multiply and divide. And let's look at a couple of examples of this. All right. So pause and copy. And uh, all right, let's take a look. Now, again, the point of this whole thing is to make this into a 1x and to get rid of this over here. So we're going to get rid of that and uh, get x by itself. Then we can say, oh, we found out what x is. x is whatever it is. Okay. So we know how to get rid of this right here. We're going to add 7 to it, right? So if you want to, you can write it like this if you want to. 6x minus 7 plus 7, which you did this to the left, which means you do that to the right. Exactly the same thing. It's an equation. You have to keep it the same. All right. Or if you want, you can just go kind of like this. I'm going to add seven over here and I'm going to add seven over here. Like you're like you're adding in a column like you've done since grade school or whatever, whatever you called it back then as homeschoolers. OK. All right. So we have this is gone now, right? Nothing left there. And negative seven plus a seven, zero. So we just have six X. Now we have 11 plus seven, which is 18. OK, well, the last thing we do is remember, if you have an integer like 6 or 12 or negative 52 or whatever, by the x, you're going to divide by the integer on both sides. Okay, so you go divide by 6 here, and then since you did a division by 6 over here, you do divide by 6 on the right side. And of course, 6 divided by 6 is just 1. That's the whole point of this, is to get x to 1. 18 divided by 6 is 3, and there is your answer. Done. Okay. If you ever are not sure, you know, did I do that right? I'm not sure. Well, just go back and stick in the three in the original equation right here. You can go six times x. That means six times three, right? That's 18. Minus seven, minus seven, equals 11, equals 11. Is this a true statement? Yeah, it's true. So that proves we're right. Okay. Let's try another one. Pause and copy. <clears throat> All right. Well, in this one, we are going to do addition and subtraction first to get rid of that nine is sticking out there by the negative three X. We don't want it there. We want a negative nine right here to get rid of it. And of course, this is an equation. So we go ahead and put negative nine over to the right side as well, All right? Here's our new equation. Negative three X is staying there. And now I have negative 14 minus nine. And don't forget, you need to make sure you're adding these correctly and subtracting correctly. They're both the same sign. So you take the absolute values, which is 14 and nine, and you add them. 14 plus nine is 23. But since they're both negative, that'll be a negative, okay? All right, the last step is we divide, since that negative three is an integer, we'll divide both sides by negative three, right? Because the whole point is to get positive one X. If you have negative three X, you're gonna have to divide by something to make it into a positive one. Well, what do you divide negative three by? To get to positive one, the answer is negative three. Anything divided by itself is one. All right, since we did it to the left, we do the same thing to the right. That, of course, goes away. I just have an x is 23 over three. Now, question, what is a negative divided by a negative? It is a positive, right? So the answer is positive 23 divided by three. You can just leave it like that. You can put, you know, seven and two thirds if you want to, but generally it's accepted to just go ahead and leave that as an improper fraction. So there we go. All right, let's try another one. Pause and copy. <clears throat> All 
Okay. And again, you know what you need to do first, right? We're going to get rid of that negative 6 first. To get rid of it, we add. Which means we add over here, too. Here's our new equation. Negative 5y is the only thing left. That's gone. Takes it to a 0. 10 plus 6 is 16. And the last thing we have to do is divide by negative 5. Now you can leave this if you want to. In other words, we've got a y here, 16 over negative 5. You can leave it like that if you want to. Probably in the back of your book, you'll see this as an answer. Because a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So the negative, you can apply it to the entire fraction there as your answer. So there we go. All right, let's try another one. Oops. <clears throat> Pause and copy. Okay, well, we are going to first get rid of the 12 by subtracting it, which means we subtract 12 from the right side as well. All right, new equation is negative 11 times p. Those go away, and negative 5 minus 12 is negative 17. All right, last step, divide each side by negative 11. And of course, negative 11 divided by negative 11, that's the whole point, is to get it to positive 1. So we have a p is equal to 17 over 11. Now, question, what is a negative divided by a negative? It is a positive. So there's our answer, positive 17 over 11. All right, let's try another one. This is a little different, so pause and copy. <clears throat> okay, a little different, but no big deal. We've done simple ones like this before. Okay, remember what we did do, we'll talk about it in a second. All right, we have uh, a two-thirds x, then we have this thing sitting there, which we do not want there. So how do we get rid of negative five, or excuse me, negative three-fifths? We add three-fifths, right? So we're going to add three-fifths over here, and of course, we're going to add three-fifths over here as well. Two-thirds times x, and these, of course, go away. A half plus three-fifths, let's just go ahead and do this in one step here. We know that the common denominator is 10. Half converted to 5, that's going to be 5 over 10. Three-fifths, that'll be 6 over 10. So 5 tenths plus 6 tenths is 11 tenths. Okay, now let's go back. Remember what we did uh, a previous, in previous lesson? We said, oh, if this is not an integer, we're going to have to multiply both sides by something to make this into 1x, okay? Well, what do you multiply 2 thirds by to make it into a 1? Well, you multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal, of course, is just a, flat, a fraction, the fraction frit. It's the friction flat, a, a fraction flipped, okay? Since we multiply by 3 halves, we multiply by 3 halves, all right? There's our x now. We have x, and I can't really, you know, uh, reduce this and your cancel. So 11 times 3 is 33, 10 times 2 is 20, and there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Ooh, this is nasty looking. Well, what do you suppose we do? We know how to do these types, right? With all integers. We know how to do those. So coming up on something like this, Often in Saxon math, what he will do is to present you with a new problem type. And he will teach you uh, how to make this new problem type look like an old problem type that you're used to doing. So you do one extra step, make this new problem type look like an old problem type, then you're set, boom, you got it. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is transform this and make this into a new problem type. And we'll do this again in the future, but let's go ahead and just attack it right now. I know all these decimals, that's some junk. So let's go ahead and move all these, uh, you know how sometimes you go like this in division, you go, oh look, 0.37 divided into, uh, you know, I don't know, 635 or something like that. And you go, oh wait, I know, I move this over twice and that makes it 37. Then I move this over twice and that gives me 635,000. Now I can do it. That's exactly what you're going to do here. You're going to move all these decimals over the same amount of times, just like you moved it twice here and twice here. You're going to do exactly the same thing, 
the most number of times you need to move the, these decimals to get rid of the decimals totally to turn these all into integers is twice, right? You're gonna to need to move this over two times here. So you're gonna do that. You're gonna also then do it over here. And since you did that, there's an extra zero right there. And you're gonna do this as well. And you know we're gonna to have to put an extra zero in there as well. So now we have a new equation, which looks like this. 40x minus one to 20 equals negative 16, all right? No big deal. You treat this exactly like we would another one. Well, the first question is, how do we get rid of the negative 20? We add 20, right? Okay, so plus 20, and we're gonna go plus 20. Okay, not that big of a deal, all right? What's our new equation look like? You tell me, what's, on, what's left on the left-hand side? 40x, right? Okay, and what is negative 16 plus 20? And you should be getting pretty, pretty quick at these, and the answer is four, all right? And then the last step, we need to divide both sides by what? 40, right? 40 and 40. Of course, that goes away. And you have just your x. 4 over 40, if you reduce the fraction, is just 1 tenth. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Let's try a couple of these practice sets. Uh, go ahead and try A and then uh, pause it and come back when you're finished. <clears throat> All right, well, we're going to have to, first off, get rid of this negative 3 tenths by adding 3 tenths to make it 0. And we'll do exactly the same thing to the right side as well. Okay, well, we know what's left over on the left side. 2 fifths x is equal to 1 half plus 3 tenths. I'm going to go ahead and make these the common, dom uh, common denominator of 10. So a half will be 5 tenths plus 3 tenths is 8 tenths. And I'll go ahead and reduce that to 4 fifths. And you might have done the reducing at the very end of your problem. It's okay. All right. So we're going to clear out two thirds, excuse me, two fifths. What do we need to multiply both sides by to clear out two fifths? Five halves, right? So five over two here. And of course, five over two here. Same thing. So yoink and gone. X is equal to that. Okay. Well, look at there. The fives cancel. Oh, even the four and the two cancels. That's a two on top and a one on the bottom. And the answer will be X is 2. There we go. Okay. Pause it and now try B. And first off on B, change the 2 and 1 fourth to an improper fraction. Make that your first step. Okay. Go ahead and pause it. All right. Well, let's try it. Uh, we're going to first, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 9 fourths X plus 3 sevenths equals 5 fourteenths. And we know what we need to do. We're going to have to mi minus the 3 sevenths, right? Subtract that. And there we go. We have 9 fourths x. And we have 5 fourteenths. Of course, this goes away. 5 fourteenths minus 3 sevenths. Let's go ahead and change this into uh, the common denominator here. So we have not th negative 3 over 7, but negative 6 over 14. All right. Well, what is 5 fourteenths? minus 6 fourteenths. The, the answer is basically what's 5 minus 6, and then put that over 14. Well, that will be negative 1 over 14. Okay? All right. Last step is to do what? You tell me. What do you multiply both sides by? 4 ninths, right? Okay, there's our 4 ninths, and then there's our 4 ninths. And that, of course, goes into, make, turns it into an x, just a regular old x. Let's go ahead and reduce first here with by twos for this four and the 14. So uh, two goes into 14 seven times, two goes into four two times. So a negative one times a two is negative. Well, we know it's gonna be a negative overall answer. One times two is two, and then seven times nine is 63. That's like a disgusting answer. Okay, weird. All right, good enough. All right, let's take a look at C then. Go ahead and get rid of, you know, move your Oops, that should be, let me check that real quick. Hold on a second. Okay, we figured it out here. So yeah, I had an, a minus instead of an equal sign. All right, well, again, we're gonna move the decimals over as many times as we need to to clear them out and make these all integers, okay? So it looks like all we need to do is move this over one time, one time, and then how many X's would that make it? Another zero there. Okay, so you have a new equation. 12 equals negative, uh, excuse me, negative 14 plus 20x. By the way, 
um, in the Western Hemisphere, we generally read things left to right. Uh, if you would like to go ahead, and anytime you see an equal sign like this, and you go, gee, all my X's are on the right, I want them to the left, that's how I'm used to it, feel free to just absolutely flip the entire thing like this. Just take it and go, negative 14 plus 20X equals 12. It's the same exact thing, just flipped, all right? Well, we need to get X by itself. We do not want this thing here. Now, usually we see ones like, that look like this, you know, 3x minus 7 equals 11 or something like that. Usually it's on this side. It doesn't matter. It can be on the left side. You just go, you just do exactly the same thing. You go, I'm going to get rid of negative 14, so I'm going to add 14. Well, if I add 14 here, I add 14 here. Yep, there we go. Done. My new equation, 20x is equal to 12 plus 14. And the last thing we do is to divide by... done. I have an x now. 26 divided by 20 is just 26 divided by 20. If you want to go ahead and reduce that, that's by 2s, that's going to be 13 over 10, and there you go. Okay, all right. Pause it and try D. That's our final one. Okay, well, again, we're going to get rid of all these decimals, which means we're going to have to move them over twice to get rid of that which means we move this over twice, and that's going to be 40. We move this over twice, which gives us an extra zero. Okay, so now we have 70x minus 40 equals 16. Okay, all right. We know what to do now to get rid of the negative 40. What is it? Add 40, right? Okay, and then we add 40 over here, and then we have a new equation, 70x equals 16 plus 40. And the last thing is we divide by... 70, divide by 70, divide by 70, and looky there, x is equal to 56 over 70, and as you should know your times tables and your division tables, and realize that 7 goes into both of those, okay? So you can go, okay, 7 goes into 56 8 times, it goes into 70 10 times, all right? And of course, we can reduce that one more time and make that 4 fifths, okay? All right, all right, do your practice problems and... Uh, Pay special attention to these types here. Make sure you look at your solution manual if you need to to make sure you get them right. And uh, you guys have a great day. We will see you next time. Take care.